this new course from Isha Training Solutions. This is Kumar Gupta here. Well, the course is the load runner for SAP GUI applications using SAP GUI protocol. And uh, thank you for giving all the encouragement that you have given with my last course. It's a hugely successful course. And I'm so, so glad for making that course such a success with, uh, uh, with almost uh, the rating of 4.5. Uh, I'm totally overwhelmed with that. Um, with that same, with the encouragement that you have given, with all that energy, I'm creating this new course, the load runner for SAP GUI protocol. So probably this could be the first course out there for this SAP GUI protocol, an official course I haven't seen anywhere online. So I'm very, very excited to present this course to everybody. And uh, I hope a lot of people will take advantage of this course and learn uh, how to use load runner for SAP uh, GUI applications and uh, will enhance, improve their resumes and uh, become experts uh, with this particular protocol. So on that note, let's get started. So <clears throat> as mentioned in my demo video, the first thing that I would start with is the load runner architecture. Uh, before, before I get into the details, okay, uh, I have mentioned this in my demo video as well, that what is the prerequisite to take this course? Well, you have to have the basic knowledge of load runner, uh, which means that you would have taken this load runner course somewhere, or maybe uh, from my Udemy uh, load runner, uh, you could have uh, Udemy course, you would have taken it, and uh, <clears throat> or you would have used the load runner somewhere. Okay, so with that assumption, I have created this course. Okay, so even though you don't know much about load runner, you still be able to. A complete, uh, you will be still be able to uh, understand the course, complete the course, but uh, you would not understand the full power of load runner because this course mostly concentrates on the VUGEN scripting, okay? Not on the controller, or not much on the controller or not much on the analysis side. So since the controller and analysis is pretty much same uh, irrespective of the protocol, I didn't added those videos or didn't uh, cover that that part of the course as a part of this particular uh, course okay so <clears throat> that's the reason why I kept that as a prerequisite but still you know uh, you would take it you could take it and you could uh, uh, you would be able to understand it uh, but still you would have to uh, learn the controller and analysis from elsewhere so having said that expectation let me get started the first thing to learn is the load runner architecture so let's look at the architecture of Microsoft Office. So you take a host machine on which you wanted to install the Microsoft Office. You take the Microsoft Office and install it over there. And that's about it. And that's what is the architecture of Microsoft Office. And it is very, very simple. So the software, the Microsoft software is installed on a host machine and that's it. That's what it is. But the load runner, it's a little more complicated than that. Okay, so <clears throat> before I get into the architecture side, I would want to, since you have already as you, I, I made the assumption that since you already know load runner, so you would know that there are multiple components to this tool called load runner. They are the VUGEN or virtual user generator, the controller, analysis, and load generators. Some people call it as injectors. Some people call it as agent machines as well. And typically, you could you would have one LG or you could have more than one LGs or load generators. So. <coughs> These are the four components of load runner, okay? So let's see the purpose of each one of those components and how they interact with each other. So this box over here represents the region. This box here is the controller. This box is the analysis. And this box here uh, would represent the load generators. Just to, sh just to prove a point that you could have more than one load generator, I have put two here, but you could have three, four, five, or most of the times you get away with one, but you could have more than one LGs. And this is our application under test. Usually uh, it's a SAP GUI application. That is what you would be testing. So this is the SAP servers, so which is your application under test. Here, uh, the, the SAP under application under test, SAP usually contains like an app server, um, and then uh, the Oracle database server. Okay, and a HANA server. So I'm not gonna represent. I, I'm not gonna put all that servers over here because at the later point of time we'll discuss about the architecture of the SAP as well. But here, okay, not to make this 
uh, picture complicated. I've put only one box and one SAP server, but honestly speaking, there is uh, there's a lot of servers over here. Uh, and since we are discussing about the load runner architecture, I don't want to make this SAP or application under test architecture also add it to it and make it more complicated, no. But this one, this part at the later, in the later slides, we'll certainly discuss about the architecture of the SAP as well. So the VGen component typically will be used for creating the scripts. So let's assume there are two scripts that we have created. One is the purchase order script and one is the purchase requisition script. Okay, so typically in a real time project, you create probably 10 to 15 scripts. In the recently concluded in one of my project, I had to create close to eight scripts. Okay, and for the module called MM, later on we'll come, come we'll, we'll discuss about what are modules in SAP and what is MM and all that. But uh, just to give you a ballpark idea as to what it is. So in the recently concluded project, I've created close to eight to 10 scripts. So, but here, just for discussion purposes, let's say you've created those two scripts. One is the purchase order script and one, one is the purchase requisition script. We'll discuss about what is purchase order, purchase requisition at the later point of time when we discuss about application under test. Now, <clears throat> what typically happens is once you create the scripts in the VUGEN, you upload that scripts into the controller. You upload those scripts into the controller and this is my controller. This box represents my controller. So I've uploaded these two scripts, purchase order script and purchase requisition scripts into the controller. But before up uploading them to the controller, you execute these scripts in the VGen for multiple iterations and make sure the scripts are working fine before the scripts goes into the controller. Now the scripts went into the controller. Let's assume the purchase order script we are executing with 600 virtual users and purchase requisition scripts let's, ex let's execute with 400 virtual users. Typically the number may not be this high, but I've just put it as this high just to show that, you know, you could have high numbers as well. But in the recently concluded project, you know, I've applied close to um, 50 users for purchase order and 20 users for purchase requisition, honestly speaking. But, you know, just to, show that you know you could have high numbers i've put uh, these two numbers over here 600 and 400 and let's say one lg supports close to 600 users so uh, you cannot have one user now so since one lg can support only 600 users so that's why you have put two lgs over here this 600 will be coming from lg1 and this 400 will be coming from lg2 LGs are the machines which will give this users. LGs are the machines which will give this users, not the controller. Controller is only for configuring, configuring the number of users with which you are executing the script, but the actual users are coming from the LGs. The actual users are coming from the uh, load generators. Since we made this assumption that one LG cannot support more than 600 virtual users, so we have to have two LGs now. So the first LG is giving 600 and the second LG is giving 400. It has the capability to give 200 more. So had I had one more script, I could have used LG again. So <coughs> yes, we have configured this in my, in, a, in my controller. So the controller is controlling the scripts, is controlling the LGs and it is controlling the number of virtual users. So no wonder you're calling this as a controller. No wonder you're calling this as a controller. So now in the controller, once you click on the run button, once you click on the run button, what actually happens is this PO script will be downloaded onto this LG1 machine, onto this LG1 machine, and this purchase requisition script or PR script will be downloaded onto my LG2 machine because that's why you have because that's what you said when you are configuring in the controller. So now LG1 machine is supposed to give 600 virtual users. So that's what it will do. It will give 600 virtual users and LG2 machine will give 400 virtual users. So that's what it will give. Now the 600 virtual users will be continuously concurrently running this purchase order script. And this 400 virtual users will be continuously concurrently will be executing the purchase requisition script. Concurrently means simultaneously. So all these 600 users will be simultaneously running this purchase order script. Well, it depends upon your ramp up as to how you have defined the ramp up in the controller. These 600 users will come into existence. At the later point of time, we'll discuss about the ramp up. So depending on the ramp up, the 600 users will slowly ramp up and and will be continuously executing this purchase order script and 400 users will be continuously executing this purchase requisition script. And do 
and usually in the real world when you run a load test a test called load test you run the test for one hour which means that the 600 users will be continuously running this purchase order script for one hour and 400 users will be continuously running this purchase requisition script for one hour so as they are running the script a request will be sent to the sap servers and sap server will send the response back and same thing will happen with the pr script as well as as this 400 users are running this pr script continuously multiple requests will be sent to this sap servers and sap servers will be continuously sending the response back so after one hour you typically have uh, the results generated or while executing as well the results will be generated continuously so this this one let's assume for the lg1 the results are lg1 results and this and these are the results for lg2 so once the test is done this lg1 results and lg2 results will be sent back to the controller will be sent back to the controller and <coughs> usually controller will collate these results collate means combine these results collate means combine these results so it will combine these results from these two lg machines had you had one more lg machine the one more lg machine which let's assume it's lg3 so lg3 will create its own results file and will send it to the controller so now the controller will not collate two results but it will collate three results typically you will have one single result file why the controller will collate this because as a performance tester you don't want to see the results of each lg machine separately you want to see the combined results of all the lgs or combined results of all the scripts together so that's the reason why it is better to collate once we collate a performance tester typically takes this results and open that in the analysis and open that in the another component called analysis this doesn't happen automatically this doesn't happen automatically as a performance tester we have to import these results into the analysis so that you can do further analysis on the results as to how these transactions have performed where we went wrong how the servers have behaved and all that you will be able to do that in this analysis comp so this is what a load runner architecture looks like guys so in the view gen you create the scripts let's have a quick recap on all of that so view gen you create the scripts and once you execute the scripts in the view gen make sure the scripts are working fine you upload those scripts into the controller i have considered only two scripts but typically you could have 20 to 30 scripts all the 20 30 scripts will be uploaded into the controller you configure the lgs and number of virtual machines virtual users with which you run those scripts so here I have only two scripts. I have configured the first one for 600 using LG1 machine and configured the second script for 400 users using the LG2 machine. And once I click on the run button, these scripts will be downloaded onto these LG machines and the LG machines will give the virtual users and these virtual users will be continuously running these scripts. So which means that the, the request will be sent to this SAP servers and SAP servers together. There are a lot of servers here like HANA server, um, application server, database server, all the servers work together and send the response back same thing happens with the second script as well and you get the results file which will be uploaded into the controller or sent back into the controller all these steps happens um, internally and automatically visually you will not be able to see it and once all the results are over here it will collate the results it means the controller will collate the results which as a performance tester you can upload that into the analysis a component called analysis to do further analysis this is what a load runner architecture looks like guys so in my next video we will look into where this how this component will be installed in a real time setup and how this components will be installed in our setup we'll be looking into it in the next video